Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a new video. So we got Big Bertha in the garage tonight and we are going to be doing a modification. First off, I apologize, the truck is absolutely filthy. It is pollen season here in New Jersey and it is never ending. And uh, with it being a black truck and also living outside, there's kind of no point in washing it. But we're towards the end of it, so hopefully I can get a good wash in with my Active 2.0 Obsessed Garage pressure washer and get this thing cleaned up and looking proper. But what we're actually doing tonight is something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Now, I've done a lot to this truck in a very short time, and there's one other thing that I really, really wanted to do to this truck. Now, this is a 2015. 2015 to 17, I believe, came with the Sync 2 uh, infotainment system. In 2018, they upgraded to Sync 3, which is a much better overall system. It's much faster. You get Apple CarPlay. You get a bunch of other features that the Sync 2 does not offer. And to be frank, I'm not a big fan of Sync 2. It's very slow. It looks very outdated. And with all the things that I've done to this truck to modernize it and make it look much better, the infotainment system is something that I definitely wanted to do. So this is the Sync 2 system. Obviously the truck is not on, so you can't really see the features of it. I'll show you in a little bit, but it's really nothing to kind of write home about. Uh, but this is what we are going to be upgrading. Now there's a few options out there in terms of aftermarket. If you guys have been following me in my STI journey, you guys know that the iDoing head unit in my STI was a very, very popular modification. I think it was like 350 bucks, put it in my STI. It was absolutely flawless for the five years that I had it in the STI and uh, gave me Apple CarPlay. It really modernized the whole entire car and it was a great unit. So I first started looking at some aftermarket units and I came across one, I forgot the name of it, but it was $2,000. It was really nice. The whole entire thing was a big screen, very much like a Tesla. Had a lot of nice options, had CarPlay and all that. CarPlay is the only thing that I really care about to be completely honest, uh, but I just couldn't justify spending 2,000 bucks on a head unit when all I really wanted was CarPlay. So I started looking at some other options and I found a really cool company that offers the Sync 3 upgrade for the 2015 to 17 F-150s, uh, pretty much in a plug and play kit. So that is what we have here. I ordered this whole entire kit from Simply Michigan Infotainment Systems. Pretty cool, they give you everything you need to actually upgrade to Sync 3. You get the whole entire unit, which is what we're gonna be replacing. Also, all of the harnesses and USB hubs and everything that you need to convert it over. So there's a few different companies that sells something very similar to this. However, you have to be really careful about buying uh, some aftermarket overseas units. Uh, I've heard people buying them and they just don't work properly. There's a lot of glitches and everything. So make sure you buy proper OEM pieces uh, that's actually gonna work in your vehicle. So as I mentioned, I wanted to buy from a legit source. Simply Michigan infotainment. You can't go wrong there. Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> so I figured it was a good buy. Now this whole kit, it was around 730 bucks. So not too bad considering I was about to spend 2000 on that aftermarket head unit, but this is what you get in the kit. So it's really nice to give you some pry tools. They also give you uh, some Sour Patch Kids, which is really cool. And also some instructions as well. It's a very, very simple process. This whole entire thing is completely plug and play. There's no splicing of wires. There's no crazy uh, install or anything like this. You don't need to take it to a shop. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to do this. Uh, so if anybody is curious how to install it, all you gotta do is follow this video and now uh, you can confidently install your Sync 3 system in your Sync 2 truck or car. So let's go ahead, let's get started removing the Sync 2 unit in the truck. And then we can go ahead and get this installed. All right, so just to show you some quick features on how this thing kind of functions, this is the Sync 2. Before we remove it, I'm just gonna turn the truck on so you get somewhat of an idea. All right, so this is what it looks like. This is the main screen. You got uh, Bluetooth and all your radio, your media, your phone and the date and everything, and that's pretty much it. Um, you got different settings that you can go over here, as you can tell how slow it is. Um, sometimes you have to double tap, but here's all your settings, your clock, your display, and all that. There's really not much to uh, kind of customize in this whole thing. The only thing that I have customized, I guess if you want to call it that, is the logo back here. You're able just to select that or a pretty much black background, but that is what I got. That's the extent of this thing. That's pretty much it. So I just wanted to show you that real quick before we move on to the new one, because there is way more features on the Sync 3. But let's go ahead and start removing this unit and uh, getting the new one in. All right, so how to remove the actual head unit. It's very, very easy, much easier than uh, previous cars I've ever dealt with. We're gonna start up here. Now, if you don't have this center speaker up here, you don't need to do this step. It simply just pulls up 
Uh, but we got to remove this little speaker grill here since there is two screws underneath. So we're going to take one of our pry tools. We're going to see which one works and kind of just get your tool underneath and pry up the cover. Maybe the other one's going to be a little bit better. All right, so we got the cover removed. It's pretty difficult. It's in there very, very well. And the tool that it came with, I already broke two of the prongs. So if you have a stronger uh, trim removal tool, highly recommend that. But these clips are in there pretty well. So just be careful, you don't break them. But it is out and we got it out without any damage or anything. So put that aside. So now that we got the cover removed, you can see there's two holes, one right there and one on the other side. Those are seven millimeters. So we're gonna take a seven millimeter uh, ratchet or wrench, whatever you have and loosen those. Sorry, this is hard to do one-handed, but just gonna go ahead and loosen those. And I'm kind of doing this blindly. <laughs> so I may have to remove the speaker, so I'll let you know once I get these loosened. We got the screws out, so as you can see, the back is loose, but now we need to pry up on this side. So we're gonna take one of our pry removal tools, get down on the side and kind of pop it up. Uh, this is just pressure release with some clips. So once we pop that up, and then we can actually unplug the speaker and take this whole piece out. So we got the whole top area out. Um, it's just a little clip to remove the speaker right here. So it's pretty simple to remove. Uh, but as I mentioned, this thing is pretty cheap. I broke off each tip and I also broke off that whole entire head with barely any pressure. So if you have some better pry tools, use those. This one isn't as bad, um, a little bit more flexible. And that one, this one's a little bit more stiff, so it breaks. So just be on the lookout for that. All right, so now we're actually going to remove the trim around the head unit. Uh, as you can see up here, there's one, two. Those are seven millimeters as well. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. I need to get my ratchet, put the camera down, but I just wanted to show you those. And then we should be able to pull this forward and uh, get this trim off. See, I already got the trim off. So once you take the two top seven millimeters off, you can actually pry this whole thing out. So this whole piece is removable. Now you can either leave this on or unplug it. I'm gonna unplug it just for the ease and for the video so I can show you guys. But you can probably leave this on and kind of manipulate it, but I don't wanna end up scratching the screen, especially on the new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug these on the back. Just remember that you have to plug them back in before you reinstall it. All right, so I ended up just leaving these two uh, bottom ones for the uh, power for the whole unit and the uh, little tune button and everything and everything else below, uh, simply because I just removed the top ones and I was able to kind of lay this down no problem. So instead of fiddling with these clips and potentially breaking them, I was able to get these top ones off pretty easily. Uh, so I figured that is enough. So if we look over here, uh, this is where we're gonna be working. So you kind of just move these wires out of the way but we're gonna remove these four seven millimeter screws on either side, pull this out and unplug everything in the back. And then we can go ahead and swap everything over. All right, so we got the Sync 2 display out. As you can see on the back, there is two plugs. Very easy to remove, as you can see. This one, you just push that top little pin in. And the bigger one over here, there's a big gray clip. You simply just pull that towards the passenger side and it releases, and then uh, the whole display will be free. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring this over to the bench, compare it a little bit, and then uh, install the new one. And so this is the Sync 2. This is the Sync 3. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. I'm gonna leave this on as I'm installing it. They actually say to do that because you don't wanna scratch it and it's actually pretty fragile. Uh, but let's go ahead and remove it so you guys can see a little bit of the difference. As you can kind of tell, I know this one's kind of dirty, but the actual screen, as you can see, it's kind of frosted. Whereas this one is super crystal clear. This is more of a glass finish. I'm not really sure if it is glass. I don't wanna tap it and put fingerprints on it. This is more of a fuzzy kind of frosted screen. Um, you know, this is kind of old tech, whereas this is way nicer. It's, the entire display is going to be way more clear and way easier to read and use. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. On the back, flip this one over. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on this one so we don't scratch it, as I mentioned. 
Uh, but if we flip it over, as you can see, there's a few more things on the back comparing. Um, this one is pretty straightforward, whereas this one, it's got a couple other little things. I'm not a big audiophile, so I really don't know all the technical terms, but as you can tell, there's definitely some differences. So uh, the two plugs that you're gonna be plugging in, as you can see, are exactly the same. So the smaller one went to that one, is gonna go here, and the big one with the gray retaining clip is gonna go on this one. So really straightforward, very easy. We're gonna go ahead and open this up as well because there's a few things we need to connect on the back here, like the GPS antenna. All right, so I ended up opening that little black bag. This is the uh, little USB uh, thing that you're gonna be changing in the little console. The reason why you change this is because on the Sync 2 one, there is a little slot right here for an SD card. The little SD card is actually what has the maps for the uh, navigation on the Sync 2. The Sync 3 has all the navigation, all the maps already integrated into here. So you don't need that SD card one. Plus this is actually nice. I think these actually light up, which is pretty cool. You also get a little harness that plugs right into the back of there that goes into the OEM harness. And then this is your GPS antenna as well. So very simple. I'm really happy I found a nice company that just has the entire kit with everything you need. So you don't have to sit there, find every piece and try to get it to work. So really cool, really happy with it so far. So now let's go ahead and um, put the little GPS connector. It goes right into this connection, the little uh, blue plug right there. You can see it has a similar connection point. I saw some videos of where people put this for the best reception. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that as well. And then uh, we'll do the little USB uh, part last. All right, so real quick, before we bring this to the truck, I uh, kind of forgot that we need to put the actual brackets on the Sync 3, because otherwise there's no way to actually bolt it up to the actual truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these brackets. As you can see, there's some screws on the side here. They're actually T18s. So we're gonna go ahead and get a T18 uh, bit, and we're just going to remove them and um, actually just put it right back onto the new Sync 3 unit. It just attaches exactly the same way, same screws and everything. So let me go ahead and transfer this over. All right, so I'm back. What's a modification on a vehicle without having to run to Lowe's or a hardware store to get a new tool? So as I was taking these brackets off of the Sync 2, uh, I said T18 before I meant T8. This T8 right here, as you can see, broke. So I was kind of SOL. So I was trying to find another one, but unfortunately I only had one T8. So I had to run to Lowe's and pick this up and uh, get myself a new T8. So I only needed it for this one, but I figured I might as well just get this whole thing. I didn't want to chance it and uh, get something else. So now I got a nice little set, but I got the new brackets on and we are good to go. Uh, I got the GPS plugged in. So now we can bring it over to the truck and finally get this installed. All right, so I got the head unit in here. What I'm actually gonna do is plug everything in. I'm gonna mount it up to the actual bracket over here and then uh, I'll show you where to place the GPS antenna. I just wanna make sure it's in place before uh, I start kind of working around here and everything and I'll just get it in the right spot so I don't drop it and damage it. So still have the uh, screen protector on as you can see, just in case, but let me go ahead, plug everything in, mount it up. All right, so for the antenna, as you can see, I looped it into the back, but this thing is magnetic. So you can stick it anywhere there's metal and it's gonna stay. So if you look in the back, there's this metal bracket right here. I think that is a great place for it. Uh, it's easy access, so if it's not great signal, I can simply just pop off this top and find a new spot, but we're gonna stick it right there. I think that's gonna be just fine. It's gonna have a great reception. Uh, but if I don't, I can find another spot, but it should be okay there. I know a lot of people use that uh, metal bracket there, so it should be fine. So I'm going to zip tie up the rest and kind of tuck it in the back nicely. And once we get all the trim and everything all set, we can go ahead and do the uh, USB down here, and then we can test this thing out. All right, so screen is installed, and now we're gonna move down here to the little USB port. Uh, so all we're gonna do, you can use a pry tool, but I found that I'm able to kind of just pry it open or take it off, get my fingers underneath. Then uh, we're gonna unplug those, use the little harness, and plug the new one in. Is the 
new USB hub and the little wire harness. We're going to go in the back and clip in the new harness here. It only goes in one way, so you can't screw that up. Then this one is just going to go to the larger connector down there. And then the smaller connector is going to go in uh, this one with the actual little plug in there. So let me go do that, pop it in, and we should be good to go. All right, so I turned the light off so we can actually start it up and you guys can see. It actually says in the directions, number eight, uh, says turn on your vehicle, let the system boot up. It's important to go to the settings menu, click general, and then scroll to the bottom and click master reset. This should wipe the slate clean. It says don't worry, your program won't be affected so you won't run into any weird issues later. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll catch back up with you guys in a second. All right, guys, so it is absolutely amazing. CarPlay, just use uh, one of the outlets down there and you plug it in. I may get a wireless CarPlay adapter. I had that in my SDI, so I can just hop in the truck and don't have to connect anything and it goes right to CarPlay, but pretty amazing. The entire interface is very fast, much faster than Sync 2, which is really nice. It looks like it's blinking on camera, but it is not in person. That's just the frequencies. The camera's not able to capture it, but it's perfectly, it doesn't flash at all in person. But super responsive, absolutely love the way this thing looks. I have it set up uh, where uh, it's in dark mode always. I just kind of prefer that. But if I go into display, uh, you can simply just change that. So as you can see down here, mode, uh, you can change the auto. And then uh, when the lights are off, it turns to auto. So I'll turn the lights off for you guys and you'll see it actually switch over into day since it is in auto now. So as you can see, it turns white. One thing I don't like is the background that I like for dark when it is in dark is nice. It's this one. So it's that it looks cool. But when it's in daytime, it looks weird because it's all little dots everywhere. You can't really see it on camera, but um, that one's cool, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't know, just cool little features that I thought it would show. Uh, I like that one the best, but it looks funky with uh, it in daytime. So I may just leave it on that or something so you can see the difference. I don't know, play around with it, we'll see. But either way, really, really happy with the overall look. I think it looks fantastic. Um, honestly, everything just plugged right in perfectly. As you can see, the little USB ports down there are glowing, which the other ones were not. They didn't have a light down there, which is really nice. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm probably gonna get a wireless CarPlay adapter. Just leave it plugged in there so I won't have to worry about wires, which is really nice. So as you can see, here is CarPlay. So nice to have this in the truck. I've had this truck for a year and a half now, almost two years. And having CarPlay in here is absolutely amazing. This is what I use completely on any other car that I own and drive. So it's nice to finally have it in here since I do drive this truck every single day. Super fast, super responsive, just like any other CarPlay. So it is nice to have that in here once again. And I'm really, really happy uh, with the entire you know kit that came from Simply Michigan. Uh, it was just an absolutely plug and play kit. As you guys saw, it was super simple. Obviously this video took a little bit longer since I had the film and everything, but doing it yourself, you can probably knock this out in about 45 minutes or so. So uh, very, very simple. Don't be intimidated. It's very easy to do, uh, but yeah, super thrilled, very happy with uh, everything and uh, highly recommend it. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap up the install of the Sync 3 update. Very, very happy with it. Huge shout out to Simply Michigan Infotainment for getting the entire package together. All you got to do is give them your VIN number so they can match the VIN with your truck uh, so everything works properly. But literally, plug and play. Simple as that. Remove a couple bolts, a couple trim pieces, plug everything in, and you are good to go. You get Apple CarPlay. You don't have to worry about the reverse camera not working and everything. It's just an OEM piece. You know, it's kind of hard to go wrong with that. So very, very happy with the result uh, for 729 bucks. It may be expensive to some, but for me, I was looking to spend around two grand to get this updated with CarPlay. So uh, having to only spend nearly half of that, less than half of that, and get an OEM product with uh, plug and play and everything works perfectly. I'm very, very happy. So I will leave a link below for this exact kit if you are interested. Uh, but if you guys have any questions at all, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.